Across the Park podcast is proud to be sponsored by Globe Gas and Heating. For the best kitchen and bathroom renovations, boiler servicing and repair, and central and underfloor heating in the Northwest, head over to globecentralheating.com and quote Across the Park for a free quote. Hello, welcome to Across the Park podcast with South Females and Gary Judge on location at the amazing Access Sports College. We're not going to do a plug because we're not our sponsors, but we will. Thank you very much for allowing us to record here. One of our sponsors, Bear Clothing, thank you from them. Um, the 25%, the ATP 25 has gone down really, really well. Um, so thank you to anyone who purchased from Bear Clothing. Things like that are what keep us not in business because we're not a business, but doing shows and more regular shows because having sponsors is a big thing for us. It's giving back as well, isn't it? The, the, oh, yeah. You know, the, the our listeners are, or our subscribers and whatever are getting twenty five percent off, and we've, we know we know it's working for us. We've had quite a lot of orders, and good news for there and for users. Very few years seem to be sending them back, so you must be happy <laughs> with them. But on on that note, please give us feedback. You know, if if you you know you do like the stuff, tag us on 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 Insta and and there as well, because because that helps. Definitely. Uh, let's get straight into it. There's there's no shows to look back on. No midweek games. We did well, get just, comment, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it's funny. Actually, I don't know who the guy is, and you know, as we always say, say about the feedback, it's it's welcome, good or bad. But we love the bad, don't we? It always the, gives the, us a chuckle. The, the bad gives us a chuckle. This guy has a has a pop at me because I was plugging our shows at the start of our last show, and I pointed out, and, and just for the record, we do that more for to thank the people who are coming on because yeah. a lot of people are giving up their time, their personal time, to, to help our show and. We try and plug them shows so, so their shows get more views and those people get more exposure. So yeah. it's not always a vanity thing, by the way, no. just for the record. I'd like to think it's not. Maybe it is subconsciously. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it is. And I, I, I said <laughs> I'll try and be aware of it next time. So that's us being aware of it by mentioning it. Talk in the comments. Please leave comments in here. Share this video. Like and please subscribe. I'm not going to bang the drum too much. Too. Please subscribe, like and share. Judgey, we're, we're five days removed from the Forest game. Uh, yeah. I know going into it last week. You were more of the mindset, don't lose. I was more of the mindset, like, I think we have to win. Mm. I still feel that way. I still feel two points dropped. Have your, has your opinion changed from last week? Do you think it's a good point? or A little bit. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't expect us to play as on the front foot and, and as well as we did. Mm. I think we controlled large parts of the game, which I was surprised by. I, you know, I've, I've watched Forrest quite a bit at home this season and even against Man City at times, they, they've made things very difficult. You know, they've made games very difficult for other teams, and they often took the game to teams. Um, and, and generally, you know, certainly in the Championship, that's what Steve Cooper's approach is. He wants to dominate possession. Um, they were not able to do that. Ever- Everton stifled them for large periods. And mm. given that, and given the fact that we were in front on two occasions, and we won some of the key battles in that game, it is disappointing to not get the three points because. There are games, you hope not, but that's probably one of them games if you, you, we did end up doing the unthinkable and going down that you'd look back on and go, that Two was points. a chance for us to get three points there. Yeah, um, the game itself, I think Everton started really, really well. I don't think it was just low stifling. I think Everton were going to score the first goal, and we did. Yeah. I thought Tamari Gray made a big difference. And one thing, I know we got his goal from the penalty spot. I think he played well, but an important thing for me is I think the team trusted the attacker play more within mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and do you know what was um, encouraging? for me, is that he was still ha- able to make the ball stick. That was my worry yeah. when I seen that game, that that you know that option is, look, on the break, it'll give us more of a cutting edge in the channels in terms of pace, it'll give us a cutting edge. But when that ball goes up centrally, he might struggle. But fair play to the players, they were giving him the ball to feet. Yeah. And fair play to him, he, he was at times backing in and winning free kicks. He was getting on the half turn and, and winning free kicks. He was getting on the half turn and, and obviously turning the defence. But also he was, he was good at you know, knitting the, the 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 forward line to the midfield and setting the ball off and, and getting us in good possession. So, one of the better performances, all round performances I've seen from Zamari Gray. Yeah, and there's a moment in the in the first half I think where he was tracking back and tracking back, and he, he committed the foul. But you seen Sean Dice applauding him because he was running and he was he was fighting for the club. And I, we go back to I've, I've been critical of, of the team, and, and one of the things I've said is that I don't trust. I don't trust enough fight and I don't, don't, don't trust enough goals in that team, but he showed both for me. I mean, I, I don't think Tony Gray is ever, ever one who shies away from running. He's just a little bit 
um, inefficient in the way he does it sometimes. He's like just running for running's sake, and he sometimes he's running towards a man who's already been marked, and it leaves a gap open. So I just think it's a bit it's just ta- tactical um, naivety from him sometimes. I don't think he's a person who shies away from that work rate element. But I think the good thing about him playing is that number nine, even if he is just running, chasing the ball down for chasing its sake, playing as a nine, he's not going to kill the team defensively. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if he does it on the flanks, which I think is where Deitch is wary of playing him, I think that's when he can hurt us more than he can, you know, more than the work rate can benefit us. Yeah, no, that's fair. I just think there's an element on, on, on Sunday of watching a player who's saying, I'm responsible. It's it's on mm. me now to score the goals. And I love that because we got that with Richarlis last season. You've seen a moment in the season yeah. where he said, it's on me. And I've seen a little bit of I think that he likes that sort of guy. I think he does like to be the main man. I mean, even, you know, yeah. step, stepping up and taking that penalty. You know, that it was early on in the game, so maybe you could suggest there wasn't as much pressure as there would be late in the game. But he, he does generally want to be that person, whether it's free kicks, corners, penalties. He wants to take the mantle. Um, for me, he's not, he's not a Richarlison. But, you know, he, he certainly got capability. Um, it's consistency for me, and, and obviously that's the acid test coming into the Brentford game. Can he replicate that type of performance? And we'll obviously come on to that. We'll come on to it because there's a there's a question that I want to ask about selection because there's the number nine is possibly back. So we'll get into the Brentford game in a little bit. Just to, just to end on the Forest game, really. The reason I'll give you I'll give you my reason first, and if you agree or disagree, please you know comment. I think there was a point in the game at two one where both managers looked at the bench. <laughs> and then there was a, a point of the game at 2-2 where both managers looked at the bench and they could make the changes to affect the game. We just couldn't. And for me, that was why we didn't win the game. We couldn't put enough changes on there. Yeah, it's a good point. And it's not the first game that that's happened, is it, where you know the, the opposition managers being able to bring subs on that have changed the game. There's a couple of games at home that we've lost recently. And even going back to the Southampton game, <clears> when we were 1-0 up against them, they were able to make changes. And those changes changed the game and, and, and altered the, the, you know, the, um, the pattern of the game. I wouldn't say that the change has necessarily done that against Forrest, but they certainly provided a bit more incisiveness and obviously make our defence second-guess a little bit the way that they're playing. Um, I, I think it, you know we, we spoke about it before the game, and I don't think it'll be the last time that we say it. I think it was just general quality in them in them final thirds that made the difference. You know, your Morgan Gibbs White that they paid forty million for, your Brennan Johnson, who player, you, 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 Brennan Johnson as well. He's a rat. He, he reminds me of a Charleston a little bit. He's just winding up the, the opposition, and he's, he, you know, he's he's nitty, he's nitty off the ball. He's always trying to get involved. It's always and stuff. looked dangerous to me like when he had the ball, even off the ball and movements he was making. I was yeah, like, he's mo- got to be the one. To... His movements very good, isn't he? and he, and as you say, he's very good on the ball, one v one and stuff. He, he's always a threat, and and, and again, I go back to Morgan Gibbs White. He, he's he's a goal scorer midfielder. He's got <coughs> he's you know he's player. got he's got guile as well about him. He, he's he's everything we're lacking, and he, he, them two players. You know, they were heavily rumoured. Obviously, the money wasn't there. Sure, but, you know yeah. that there was heavy rumours that we were interested in the summer. Imagine our team with <laughs> Brennan Johnson and, and Morgan Gibbs White in. It would make a huge difference. But yeah. <clears throat> and instead, we got um, should have would have could have more more pie, pie and McNeil. Um, yeah, look, one player we did bring in the summer. I, I, I do want to talk about the injured players coming back. Mm. Can these players make a difference? Do you see a number of players coming in and, and making a difference? Let's start with. Nathan Patterson, who's now played twice mm. for, for the under twenty ones or under twenty threes, I forget what it is now. Twice he's fit. Now <clears throat> I was watching another podcast um, with someone who, who was sort of in the know, and and they were saying that the thoughts at Finch Farm, whatever, were quite safe with Seamus Coleman. They didn't want to rush mm. Nathan Patterson back because Coleman's performances have been to, to a good level. I do agree with that, but does Nathan Patterson now come back in for you, and does he give us anything extra? If so. I'm not going to be Gary Neville and Andy. I can't help. I can't help but look at this uh, in the background, and, and obviously my background is coaching anyway. I've, I've mentioned this before. We've obviously got McNeil at the moment that's playing on the left. McNeil likes to do that. The problem Michalenko's has with that is Michalenko wants to get around the outside, and there's not generally that room, and he's not quick enough and direct enough to go in there. You notice against Forrest, that's what Godfrey does. He'll drive yeah. on that inside channel. So I think it, it created a bit more balance on that left hand side, and Godfrey looked really happy just driving through the middle. And I think McNeil got a bit more space because of that, mm. because he takes a man away. What you'll get with Patterson, and we've obviously got Awobi, he's the opposite. Awobi wants to come in here. He's the other midfielder. Awobi wants to come in this space here. He wants to get involved yeah. with Gray, and Gray wants that. Yeah. He wants to link up. Patterson is going to do that a lot more than Coleman will. Yeah. So we're going to have the opposite, potentially, on that flank, and it just gives you way more variety in your attack and play, having that 
you know, more attacking midfielder. You want a Wobie getting in the area because that's the problem we've got at the moment. We've got Takori maybe getting in. I know Anna's a little bit inconsistent with it, whether he's being held back. But we're lacking bodies in the area when that ball does go wide. Obviously, we've got Godfrey going in there. So I think for me, getting Patterson, who's got the legs, he's got more energy, he's young, he's attacking on that outside, is going to is gonna give us way more balance and attack. So he comes back in and he adds something to us. I mean, if he's fit, I absolutely I think, he think is fit, it, yeah. it, it. Listen, let, no two ways about it because what impacts on the selection this weekend? It's a must-win game for me. <laughs> Once again, no, but it, but it, no, there was a difference last week. There was a genuine difference in opinion from me and you. And I'm not saying that Everton fans were siding with me. I think a lot of fans were more with you mm. than, than me. But I, I genuinely thought because of where Forest were in the league, if they to beat us and pulled away further, that almost takes another team out the mix. Another team we can't catch and take over. Another team that's not going to get nervous because they've been in the championship only last year. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a big factor. Playing Brentford, obviously in terrific form, but in a comfortable position. You know, you look at the, the teams they play Brentford in this really good run. <clears throat> very few of them are either involved in a dog fight or a, a real fight or something. You know, even the games against Arsenal where they played them and Arsenal have been fairly comfortable at the top of the league. So, I, I think this is going to be a different game for Brentford. They're, they're going to come up against some players. If we see what we've seen against Forest, they're so spirited and, and wanting to fight. I'm not sure Brentford are that type of team. And, and going back to it, I think it's a must-win game because it's one of them games where we're playing a team that is comfortable. They're not, you know, they're not fighting for their lives, Brentford. They're also not on the verge yeah. of the Champions League. They're just there or thereabouts. And they're probably feeling like, listen, this is, this is a bit of a free for us. Um, probably, yeah. Take, taking away the Brent, Brentford game and we look between now and, and the end of the season, the end of the season being Bournemouth at home. I don't half me wants it to still be alive at that point because I'm not scared. The other half doesn't want it to be alive. I want it to be, you know, I want it to be safe. And yeah. between now and that Bournemouth game, can Andros Townsend and James Garner come and make a difference for this team? Off the bench, definitely. I mean, it, I think what Sean's I can clearly do is he can get obviously get teams solid and and keep teams in the game long enough. And, and I think if he can do that, in the, you know, the games against the Leicesters and stuff where you're thinking, you know, could swing one way or the other, like you said, bringing players off the bench who can make a difference. I don't think Andres, Andres Townsend is ever going to have more than half an hour in him now. I think he's got to that stage of his career, that many injuries, broken down that many times. I don't think he's ever going to be at 100%. But Andres Townsend, from a set play point of view, from, you know, outside the area, anywhere within 25 yards, can get you the goal. If Everton are drawing a game at home, 20 minutes left. You'd bring yeah, Townsend. bring, bring yeah. him in as the extra man. Give him very little defensive responsibility. Don't be worried about tracking back. Just get in that pocket in between the defence and midfield. Get on the ball. Can you provide? Can you know If you win a free kick, can you take it? You know If you've got a chance to shoot, can you pop one from 25 yards? I think I think people like him and Garner are perfect for that. What about James Garner? Because I've not seen enough of him. You, I know you've watched him last year and you were quite excited by signing him, saying there's a player there and... We've not seen it for whatever reason. Yeah. The Lampard didn't I mean, feature him too much. Then he broke him down. What what can he bring this team? Well, the irony about what I was told about him from a physical point of view is the reason Forrest didn't take the option to sign him, they didn't think he was physically ready for the Prem. Fair and nice. he thought his robustness was not sufficient. And robustness being his ability to not be injured on, and stay fit. Yeah. And we've seen that already. But what, <clears throat> what I was told is technically outstanding. You know, if you can get him... In, in your team and from a set play point of view you can put the and, and, and an open play you can put the ball you know on a sixpence which if you get you know if you get Calvert Lewin back in but not even not just Calvert Lewin even you've got forwards like Morpai God forgive me for mentioning his name Millsy <laughs> who needs the ball on a plate probably a yard from goal it's not one where you can just lump a ball into the area it needs to be right on his yeah, yeah. head it's and right probably pass, yeah. it, you know what I mean it's got to be precise he, he's one of those players like on Andrus Townsend you can provide that that technical quality. He also gets stuck in. So he, I think looking at looking around and and, and um not maybe maybe our listeners viewers don't watch much champions fo- championship football, but one player he reminds me of is Josh Brownell, who's who's been brilliant for Burnley. He, he's Burnley sent him in the Premier League under Zite, he was a little bit of a, a dog where he runs around kicking people, but he's being reinvented under Vincent Company as a as a proper midfielder who's you know who's spraying passes, who's getting on the ball. That's who Garner wants to be. He wants to get the ball. He wants to move it on. He, he wants everything. He's a playmaker. He wants the ball to go through him. He's that number six, really, and you cry out for it a lot. Who you can trust with the ball. How often does Garner guy get it and lose the yeah. ball? He's caught in possession. Joe, James Garner. I always say Joe Garner because there is a Joe Garner. James Garner, when, he, when he's fit, I'm, I'm reliably told him from what I've seen. 
he's a playmaker. And and again, in the in the couple of games, Bournemouth may be in one of them where the opposition might want to sit off and might want to be harder to break down. I think he's the man then, if you can keep him fit, who comes in and, and is going to be a more attack attacking mind at number six, unlike unlike Guy. Before we do get to the Brentford game, I, I did want to talk about getting more goals into the team. Now, what we spoke about last week before the um, the Forest game is we gave our opinion on what we would do at the eleven. I think we both agreed after it that won't happen. So yeah. if you try and keep it to what we think will happen, yeah. How does the manager keep Damari Gray in this in the team when we've just openly said we don't think he mm. trusts him on the wing, but he's he's a goal scorer when Dominic Calvert Lewin is fit again. And how do you get a James Garner into the team if James Garner's going to be the player who's got that pass in him and it's going to take a 1-0 victory at some point to get Everton out of the zone? How do you think the manager goes about getting all these two, little two, two ways, I, I think two ways. One is is obviously, and, and Dykes was kind of famous for it, Burnley one is 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah. So do you, do you have... Gray um, and Lewin. Yeah, Gray and Lewin up there. Lewin being like the Jay Rodriguez, as he may have had. And I'm trying to compare Burnley players. I'm not saying like... We aspire to be Burnley, system, by the way. Know. Trying yeah. to think about what Dykes would yeah. like in there. If you have a Garner and a and a Decore or a Garner and, and a Guy, Garner Guy, whatever, you have them two together, and then you're having a Wobi and a McNeil. Who McNeil likes to do that? It's still it's still solid enough because a Wobi can tuck in there as well. Do you know what I mean? And, and you probably get Gray doing that a bit more, mm. but you get a Wobi covering the one v ones. So what he'd be saying to Gray is, look, you're the you're cheating if you like. You're playing a bit like a right winger. But I don't need you to do that, what Awobi's yeah, yeah. doing. Yeah. I just need you to hang about here yeah. or hang about there yeah. and be the spare man. I think he, he he's accept that. He almost has it, really, where it's like a 4-4-1-1. Four, four, one, one. I think that's one option because you, you're just allowing him to be the free man. calvert Loon's doing all that. I think what he'd probably accept now, Zaych and, and, and Angelotti, is play play, play in the, you playing between the posts. Yeah. Don't be going in there. Don't be going in there because we can see you'll get injured there. In. Play in there and then and let these guys, like your Wobies and, and Greys, pick up those yeah. those little bits there. The other way of doing it, obviously, is is just an old school 4-5-1. And again, you have Gray out there, but then you say, look, this man's going to do your work for you. And that could be an owner on the road to court. Yeah, and then you could just have your three in there. I think, I think that's... They're the only two obvious ways you do it. If you add your four three three, which is what we're playing at the moment, there's just too much, too much responsibility on that, and I just don't think he's, he's going to trust them to do that work in there. Whereas a four five one, I mean, um, people be looking at it going four five one four three three. It's the same thing. Four five one out of possession, four three three in possession. But distinctly, if you're playing a four three three, you want your wide men on the shoulders of that fullback. In a four-five-one, they're normally playing this side of the fullbacks and, and defending a little bit more than they're attacking. Okay. Uh, one last thing before we we do move on to the Brentford game is is we're coming off the back this morning of the um, NS now Grief writing an open letter, to Graham Sharp. You'll be um, glad to know, Judge, that I'm not going to read it out in full. Please. Um, yeah. But I just do want to summarise that there was some questions asked at the end of it. Mm. Um, get your opinion on it. Uh, the group have saying to Graham Sharp that accepting the non-executive director role means he has to act responsibly. They urge him to fill the leadership vacuum and to personally communicate with the fans and regularly until the club is on more stable footing. We ask you to ensure the board issues an immediate communication to clarify and bring to a close the allegations that have been so damaging to the fans about the headlock instance. I, just a, I think that's fair. I think there's been no communication since. Just, you need about to, that you in need particular. to go with it and say it did happen or I you mean, go we were wrong about that in particular yeah. Yeah. Um, we also ask that you formally request the, ma- the majority shareholder to strengthen the board with the current board of only three executives and yourself it's difficult to see how we compete and the final one was as part of this we ask that you formally request that additional non-executive directors are appointed alongside you to broaden the board's expertise and provide independent oversight to the running and management of the club first question to you is what what do you take from that do you think it's fair do you think it's reasonable second do you think he's even going to reply um i I, I think it's fair what they're saying i just don't think you know you're clutching a little bit i think going for graham sharp it's like there's two things for me and, and 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 they're both kind of personally related to him one why has he took the, the role in the first place? And obviously the rumour is, you know, Ken Wright said, you know, Graham, come in, blah, blah, blah be my yes man. If he's if he's done that, knowing that that's the case, that he's there to be a yes man, then he could only have done it for financial gain. 
And if you're doing it for financial gain over his love for the club and, and his legacy, he's in a bad place. Do you know what I mean? He needs that money. And that's that's a that's a bit of a vulnerable position for him to be. And it, and it's and I, I feel sorry for him if it is the case. Mm. If that is the case, then you know it's gonna fall on deaf ears because he's gonna have to say, Well, what, what am I supposed to do about that? The second thing is he I think might it's, also believe that, that might be a scenario. He might also believe in what, what the current board are doing. Like we don't see certain things. No. He might actually believe that all this is wrong and say, I'm not, I'm not I'm not engaging. You're so far well, wrong well, in my eyes. Well, well, There's if, no engagement. Well, well if he does, then that's that's when he should respond. Yeah. And I think that's how he, he's likely to respond if that is yeah. his genuine belief. And if he is, then obviously it's going to turn turn on him as much as it turns on the others. If he turns around and says yeah. that, I, I've got no no um, no doubt that that'll be the case. But the other thing is, I just given his lack of authority and probably you know you talk about Ken right potentially being the catalyst here and, and controlling certain members of the board. Who's sharp controlling? Like you know he's got mm-hmm. nothing on, you know, on on Denise Barrett Baxendale. You know, he'll have nothing on Thelwell. He'll have nothing on, you know, I just don't know if he's the, he's the man to be targeting here or, or not that they're targeting him because they have made their way around. But how's Sharp going to go in and say, well, right, I'm communicating now? That just wouldn't happen. If a, if a board member stood up and said, right, I'm going to start communicating the fans, they'll say, well, Sam, you're gone then. Mm. So either, if, if he felt that strongly about it, he'd walk. And, and two, if he felt that strongly about it and he could financially walk, he would. So there's two things there. He either doesn't believe it, like you said, or he can't speak out because of either his position and his need to keep that position. And I, I think, think both. He, I think both. Yeah. I, I don't think we're going to get a response. He, no. he, he was quick in, after the West Ham game. I think he said something it got leaked in the press, or not leaked in the press, maybe mm. he put it in about how it's unfair that they can't attend home games. So mm. you're already seeing his mindset that he's... Mm. he's and fair enough, do you know what? There's a number of fans who don't agree with, with mm-hmm. all of that, and a number of fans who, who, who don't want to protest and, and don't think there's a need for protest. So, and the, the last the last thing for me is the minute he took that position on the board, he stops being a fan. He's a professional, yeah, yeah. then yeah. you're a professional, and it's the equivalent of me. Like, let's say, for instance, your work starts sponsoring Everton, yeah, and 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 then suddenly your work go look, you can't be critical of Everton because we sponsor them, and that pays your wages. You, you're gonna have to stop, aren't you? You're gonna yeah, have to. Yeah. St- so it, you've got to have a bit of sympathy there, and, and I think people need to be careful. And I'm not saying this this at NS now. I'm just saying people in general just need to be considerate that Graham Sharp didn't grow up in an era where he was on millions of pounds a week. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure he's done well and had some property out of it or whatever. But I'm I'm certain that he you know he's not on Andy Gray Sky money and he never has been. Um, you know he had an Oldham job or whatever, and he has a few jobs in footy, but he has, he hasn't had that much work in footy. Mm. So I'm I'm fairly certain. Even the likes of Peter Reid are probably a lot better off than him because he's played, he's been in football for a lot longer and he's done a lot, a lot of more high-profile yeah. punditry yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, I, I I think there's a degree of that for me where I feel a little bit sorry for the position he's in. Not that I suggest that anybody writes any more open letters. It, it's it's not that I agree or disagree with it. I just don't think that you probably... I, I don't think that the All Together Now campaign are going to get the response required. But if somehow both parties could talk, I, I I would like to see maybe Ian Snow, not a Graham Stewart, just meet mm. and have minutes and dialogue. Meet two of meet two members mm. of the All Together Now campaign and say, which we're just going to be the, the front of the club. Because I know there's probably there's, we know be we know, a soundboard. Yeah. We know people who work there who are fucking boss people mm. who talk to us and, and have got their own personal opinion, and, and we'll never break confidence and we'll never mm. we'll say what people agree. But there's people here who are good people at the football club who, who are hurting. At, at what's going on because they're bit they you know they're feeling it as well let's put it that way so i think if the club can put something like a graham stewart or an ian snowden it's not fair say, on, like, i think what you're getting at there it's not fair on them either is it no, the, you know the, the, the screw, club's media the, team so when, when we're sharing and i, I know this for a fact and I'm, I'm not going to say how i know it i know this for a fact the club's media team were, were, were absolutely devastated when we share went on talk sport the other month mm. Hello, welcome back to Across the Park Podcast. Um, apologies for the, the weird break in there. We had a bit of a technical issue. Millsy's had to, to jet off back to work. So I'm joined by bloody Colin Flood. Thanks, guys. Cheers, yeah, Colin. Thanks for having us. We're going we're gonna to be previewing the uh, Brentford game, so thanks for stepping in for, for Millsy, Col. Um I'll, I'll get right into it. Obviously, it's a massive game. Me and Millsy have talked about the, the, the Forest game last week and the fact that it was a you can take some positives from it in, in the way that the players approached it, the aggression they played with, and... The fact that at times they took the game to Forest. Big question for me, I guess, um, or the first question is going to be, 
do you see him making any changes given the players that are maybe back in the frame or do you think he, he rolls the dice again with a similar 11? I think he's probably got to start with what he finished with, in, in my opinion. And the reason with that is, is again, is the results, you know, and to build that confidence uh, within the group. I mean, just from that group, but from the game, obviously the bits that I watched was the difference in 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 attack, you know, just yeah. having that, that, that different uh, option for someone to run in behind, you know, gave a different dynamic to the way uh, we attacked. But I think from... From a selection point of view, he, he's probably, for me, he's going to go with what he's finished off with. And again, I think that, that'll probably just support that bit of you know consistency within the group as well. Yeah. Um, but like you say, with, with others coming in now into the frame, you know, from injury and he's got good options, I think, you know, from the bench, you know, to affect the game. Because looking at the bench the last few games, we've had more centre-halves than... But that was the, that was the thing that Millsy touched on before against Forrest. That was the, like, you were like, for God's sake, you know... Mm. Steve Cooper's bringing in, you know, three or four players off the bench that were probably starting our team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. certainly players that that can make a, a difference. And as you say, we we've been lacking that mm. in, in in recent weeks, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, I, I still think even though he, he he's played with the same group of players that he trusts at the moment, I still don't know what what shape we'll end up playing with with mm. them further down the line when these lads come back in. But I do feel at the minute. He's, he's aiming for for, uh, for some consistency from the lads, and and again, it, you know, the, the Dominic Calvert Lewin situation is that unfortunately we're not in a position to depend on him, and he's mm. got to look at a better way of attacking, you know, a, as a team uh, without him. But certainly having him back in the frame, listening to reports that he's training this week gives us that bit of a lift mm. that you know we have got something to come off from the bench yeah. to affect the game. I, I said to Millsy, I think. Dyke should be buzzing if he can get through this game without having to use him, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because then you've got Chelsea yeah. away next week, which is a bit of a, like, you know, a roll yeah. of the dice. It's not a game that I think Dyke should have down as we've got to get three points. Yeah. Therefore, there to, therefore, it's another game you might be able to get away with not playing him. And then you're wanting them then for them big home games. Yeah, and absolutely, that, yeah. yeah. I, th I think my opinion with them games is it's one by one. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I've forecasted them myself and I, I would have flipped it the other way and said we've got something against Villa at home mm. and probably nothing against Forest away just because of the way we yeah. are from home, uh, leaking yeah. goals, etc. But I, I'm confident that with those those options that he's got, even just having them on the bench, you know, give the lift, you know, the players a bit more of a lift and it'll give the other attacking options like, you know, you've got Sims and and Mope, you know, they've got something to think about now, mm. you know, with the way they want to approach the game themselves. They've got to push themselves that little bit more, knowing we, that there's more players there. Yeah, spot on. We spoke about briefly before, I'm not trying to be, you know, Gary Neville or nothing like yeah. that, the tactics, but it was just there, so I might as well use it. We spoke before about the, the influence that if Patterson can get fit, that he might have on the team in terms of like, you know, the issue we've got at the moment, Coleman hasn't got the legs to really get beyond. You've got a Wobi that tucks inside a lot. We haven't really got that width on that mm. side. With Godfrey coming back into the team, it's allowing McNeil to hold that twitch line and Godfrey to run on those inside channels, which he's a bit more comfortable yeah. doing. What you should get if Patterson comes back in is that natural more overlapping fullback. I think that'll make a massive difference in terms yeah. of the, the attack and dynamic. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you, before he got injured, I thought he was the most informed right back, yeah. you know, around. I, 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 I actually I thought the, the progress he'd made from pre season to. Uh, I mean, I went the Leeds game um, away away from home, and and uh, he came yeah, up against Jack Harrison, who was mate. class. Yeah, but he going forward, he was scored, class yeah. defensively. You know, he covered well, mm. and he, he created a lot of you know attacks as well, comfortable in possession. I do feel it'll take him a game or two to get. Oh yeah, without doubt, where he, where he needs to be. But is just, he is he one this weekend? Is it a bit too early for him? Do you think? I think it's probably a bit too early, but personally. Uh, He's got to get minutes on the pitch, yeah. you know, uh, behind closed doors, what, whatever he's doing to, to improve his fitness levels. He, he's, he's got to be the option for me moving yeah, forward. Yeah. But I just think, it, just basing it on last season as well, Coleman was in the team as well mm. for that experience, you know, yeah. uh, to support the lads in, in, in the difficult sort of game, uh, the running of games. They have. Again, it's one of them, though, a bit like some of the other positions on the pitch, having him, you know, having him back in the squad. It is going to allow for that natural rotation because you would play your Coleman's away, you know, away at Chelsea. Yeah. Wouldn't you? you know, it's not maybe a game that, yeah. given the, the the strength that Chelsea have got in them full back areas mm -hmm. and the fact that he's probably going to come under more exactly. pressure. And the other thing as well, it's going to give him more options, Dice, because he might leave there to wing backs. You know, yeah. he might throw an extra centre half in there and, and allow those two, you know, the two full backs to play more of an attacking role um, and not worry too much what's behind them because you've got that extra centre back in. But 
I'm, I'm certainly excited by him back um, yeah. amongst one or two others because it does give you that that option to look at something different. Because looking at the bench in the last three or four games, it's yeah, like it's depressing. You know, what if we go a goal behind here, we're not going to get back into it unless it's a set piece. Well, on, on that one, then, I, I, how do you see it going? Because I mean, you spoke about going a goal behind. My personal view is we go a goal behind. It's a yeah. very, very against an informed team that are. That are playing so well that that have not only managed to string wins together, but they're getting draws as well. Mm. Where we're maybe not playing so well. If you go a goal behind against these, it looks a long way back, doesn't yeah. it? I, I I do feel that. I think the crowds. It's all cliche, and if the crowds mm. are going to play a big a big a big role in it, I almost the last game, the Aston Villa game, it, it reminded me of the the Leicester game and the running at the end of last season. It was flat. You know, mm. it was almost like the the buzz weren't there with the crowd. And yeah. I think that that's I'm looking at that as the first thing, and then secondly, you know, looking at some of the options. If Dominic Calvert Lewin's involved or he's available, and we've got Damari Gray, you know, uh, available playing in that attacking option, I'm more confident because yeah, I think yeah. if we do go a goal down, we've got more attacking options on, on and off the bench. But I I do feel it's going to be close, it's going to mm. be tight. But I do feel that we we could probably get one or two, and it just means us stopping from conceding yeah. one or two then. Uh, to see if we, if we can get a result, but I'm confident. I, I think I think for me, it, it, I agree with you. I think what, one one or two is the most we've probably got in mm. us. But but I think the other thing is it, it's going to have to be a dog of performances, and yeah. I think we're going to have to have a bit of luck to keep them out. There's not been many games in that run that they haven't mm. scored, and I think there's maybe one game that they haven't scored in out of the, the last twelve where they're yeah. unbeaten. You know, Tony's obviously Ivan Ivan Tony's a threat. Um, and, and and they've got a number of players. Technically, they're, they're a better side than us. But I think I look at the team and I look at the midfield, and I think, like most teams, I think we I think we can get about them. Do you know what mm. I mean? I think I think we can, you know, make it difficult for mm. them. I think getting them on the back foot, not trying to be too clever in midfield and putting the ball into yeah. into channels, getting them throw-ins, getting them free kicks. You know, be, be making it, allowing them to play out and then setting traps. I think that's where Dyke's game plan will lie. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that way, you know, yeah, and if you've got free yeah. flying into tackles and it gets mm. the fans behind you, I think flipping it the other way to what I put it before, if we get a, a goal, get an early goal and, the, you know, the fans stay on, on, on the backs of the players, I, I think could be one of them games where it's, you know, Brentford just don't get started mm. and don't get out. And if we don't let them get into first gear and pick mm. up where they've left off, I, I think we could easily win, yeah. you know, win by, win by one or two. What, what I've been really impressed with, and it's, it's more of a negative thing from a football point of view it is we're limiting the amount of mistakes we make from restarts from like yeah, goal yeah. kicks you know I've noticed us playing more direct which mm. you know at this point that, that's better for us as a team yeah, yeah. you know and I don't think we'll allow Brentford to, to press us like they did in the last game mm. when they played um, at Goodison we, we, we tried to build from the back and sit in and, and yeah. we got caught out and we did do by quite a lot of sides but I do feel like tomorrow, if if we set up right and Godfrey's in at left back, that's secure. That gives me more mm. defensive confidence, you know, in that position. And if we can create more in terms of like crosses, you know, you know, from wide areas, I have the opportunity to have someone who's a bit more in running in behind just to push them, yeah, you know, yeah, in a stretch, little bit yeah. more and, and let the midfielders join in that way. I think. That'll play. That'll be quite pivotal in the likes of the midfield to score more goals. If I'm, uh, goals, if I'm honest, if we got someone running in behind and mm. like like last week to Corey getting that far yeah, up, that's right, yeah. it just allowed them to to get that extra ten or fifteen yards towards the box. But I, I do a fancy us on Saturday. I think if we set out right and we've got good options on the bench, and like I said before, the, the crowds are behind the players, and you know we're, we're not sort of hanging on every mistake as we have done in the previous so many games. I think you know we get a couple of early chances. It'll set the tone for the game, and the yeah. crowd will be on the on the uh, on the side of the players. Then absolutely, we'll position them before we two before one we Everton. Go. Two one Everton. Yeah, I want to go two nil. Yeah. I want to go two nil. To be honest, I, I think it. I think it maybe a goal halfway through the first half. I think they're probably going to have a spell, which will probably be before our time and after our time. I think we can weather that. Calvert Lewin comes off the bench. We we'll probably mm. get a few set plays and maybe. Get one to finish them off. Yeah. But uh, listen, thanks a lot, Carl. Yeah, before no before we go, I just want to say, just give a shout out to to that to Alfie from uh, Alfie Squad. I don't know if you've come across Alfie, but he's he's, he's a young lad who's gone through a, a very tough time when he when he was really young with, with his father losing his father. And he's used that to set up a charity called Alfie Squad, and he supports young people mm. who are going through similar trauma. Um, he was on he was on um, Five Live on 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 the twenty eighth. Um, unbelievable interview I mean like to hear a young person he's now 
I think he's 13. Alfie watches all the shows. I think he's 13 now. And to, to hear him talking and the level of maturity that it is, and, you know, I know his mum, obviously, is right behind him with the charity. Um, listen, you need to watch it. Yeah. Get, have the tissues at the ready because oh. it's not not one for the faint-hearted, so to speak. But um, it's Alfie's squad. Um, Alfie's squad, that's his tag on, on Twitter. Go and check them out. We've got him tagged to our page as well because we're proud to, you know, to, to, to support him with that charity. But credit to you again, Alfie. Um, and, and, you know, we're all behind you. And I know you'll be behind the Blues this weekend. So that's it from us. Thanks for uh, thanks for checking in. Thanks again, Carl, for, no problem. for ducking in and getting the uh, getting the previews yeah, on for us. Yeah, all the kids will love this, Arjo, in general. <laughs> will, uh, be the first thing we watch the weekend, though. Nice one, well, uh, yeah. As always, up the fucking toffees. Up the toffees.